Hello guys, welcome to episode 6 of our Nest Access Control Explanation Series. In this episode, we are going to go over the AC6, the List Privilege Control. But as always, please consider subscribing to help grow the channel and also do smash the like button and the notification bell to get notified whenever I upload new videos. Thank you and let's get started. What is List Privilege Control, the AC6? List Privilege refers to the principle that limits users' access right to only what they are strictly required to do their jobs. A subject should be given only those privileges needed for him or her to complete their tasks. If a subject does not need an access right or elevated access right to do his or her job, that right should not be given to that subject. All right, so now let's look at the control requirement in NIST Special Publication 853 Revision 5 for AC6. Right, so AC6 list privilege control employ the principle of list privilege allowing only authorized accesses for users or processes acting on behalf of users that are necessary to accomplish assigned organizational tax so the processes acting on behalf of users are service accounts or account that does not need any human interactions all right now let's go to the discussion Organization employs list privilege for specific duties and systems. The principle of list privilege is also applied to system processes, ensuring that the processes have access to systems and operate at privilege levels, no higher than necessary to accomplish organizational mission or business functions. Organizations consider the creation of additional processes, roles, and accounts as necessary to achieve list privilege. Organizations apply list privilege to the development, implementation, and operation of organizational systems. So these are some of the related controls for AC6, AC2, AC3, AC5, AC16, CM5, CM11, PL2, PM12, SA8, SA15, SA17, and SC38. Those are the related control. And this control has uh, about 10 control enhancement. But again, if you understand the base control, what the base control is trying to achieve, the enhancement will be uh, a little bit of a lift for you to understand or to kind of comprehend. These enhancements are meant to, you know, uh, supplement the base control to make it a bit more stringent or to kind of uh, cover the areas that the base control is not covering. But again, if you understand the base control, the enhancement should be fine. So like for instance, uh, list privilege, the enhancement number one, authorize access to security functions, right? And then we have uh, enhancement number two, non-privileged access for non-security functions. We have uh, enhancement number three, network access to privileged commands. We have enhancement number four, separate processing domain. And then we have number five, privilege account. Number six, which is uh, enhancement number six, we have privilege access by non-organizational users. We have enhancement number seven, review of user privileges. Self-explanatory, right? You have to review whatever you, uh, privilege or you know, user privilege you have within your organization. Number six, and eh, number eight, sorry. We have privilege levels for code execution. Number nine, we have log use of privilege functions. Number 10, prohibit non-privileged users from executing privilege functions. These are the 10 enhancements. But again, we cannot possibly go through all the, uh, the enhancement of each controls. It's gonna take us forever to finish this control series. If you understand the base control, the enhancement will be easy for you to understand. All right, now, control requirement simplification. Let's see how best we can you know, simplify this. This control reflects the principle of list privilege security concept in which a user or processes acting on behalf of users are given the minimum level of access or permission needed to perform their job. So if you are a regular user, you need a regular user access. If you are admin, you need administrator access. If you are a developer, you need a developer access, so on and so forth. You cannot give a regular, a regular user a developer role. He doesn't need it. He's not a developer. It requires that every process 
program or user must only be able to access the information and resources that are absolutely necessary. So if you're in an organization, the users, whatever type of information they need, if you don't have a secret clearance, you cannot be exposed to certain classification of document. You will need to know, determine the type of information and resources that you are privy to. All right, so what are the benefits of list privilege? A list privilege access policy minimizes the attack surface by creating fewer targets for bad actors. So if you are within an organization and you have your regular user, even if you have bad intent or malicious intent, you cannot possibly do a whole lot because you do not have like a lot of privilege, like the administrator privilege or any other privilege that will assist you in, you know, carrying out your bad act action, you know, but if you have a lot of privileges that you're, you, you know, you don't even need, that will aid you or that will provide some support or assistance when you have that malicious intent. It prevents the spread of malware on your network. Example, an administrator or super, super user with access to a lot of other network resources and infrastructure could potentially spread malware to all those other systems. So let's say if you're an admin that has a lot of uh, um, access to a lot more systems across the network, and if your account is compromised on say system A, you can possibly, you know, spread the uh, the malware or the virus on system B, C, and D if you have access to all of these systems. So to prevent the spread of malware on your network, you limit the amount of uh, privileges that you give one person because if that account is compromised, you know that it has been spread through most of your uh, network resources or infrastructure, and that could be bad for your organization. All right, so now let's look at the control assessment approach. To ensure this control is in place and functioning as intended, that is the design and functional effectiveness, we do the following. As always, obtain and examine the access control policy and procedure, the dash one control. Obtain and examine the system security plan the SSP, again, here we are looking at the implementation statement for AC6. Number three, obtain and review access control list and role and responsibility metrics to make sure that the access specified in the access control list is the same as the access specified in the roles and responsibilities metrics. Again, if you have the access control list, this shows you the actual level of access that has been configured for each individual within the system and then likewise you bounce that off the roles and responsibility matrix so the roles and responsibility actually tells you what roles each individual should be having and that is where you do the comparison so the access control list is saying that uh, this user is uh, he has uh, say an admin level or uh, a developer you know role configured on the system or provision on the system but the roles and responsibility metrics is saying that this individual is a regular user. Yeah, again, it could be some sort of a documentation issue. You can bring that to the attention of the, the management that the roles and responsibility metrics is saying that this guy should be a regular user, but in the access control list, we have him as an admin. If it is a documentation issue, they can easily fix that, but at least you know you can bring that up to the management. And also you can carry out a research on a standard job responsibilities for a role and bounce it off the client if there is any major shift in responsibilities. It does not hurt to ask questions. Example, if an IT security analyst is having an approval role in an application such as CSAM, you know from your research that if you're an analyst, you don't have to have uh, an approval role you know, for any application there, you can ask questions, you know, say, okay, this is what I'm saying, but an analyst should not be having an approval role. And then if they have any justification for uh, an analyst having an approval role in applications such as CSAM, they give it to you. If it makes sense, you, you know, you document it and then you move on. All right. That's it for this episode. Our next episode will be on AC7, unsuccessful logon attempt. If you like this control series, you can support me to create more of these videos by hitting the like button and subscribing and I will see you in our next episode.